you or someone you love needs help for an addiction, where do you turn? Foundations Recovery Network offers individualized treatment for the whole person. Our goal goes beyond short-term sobriety. We address substance abuse and co-occurring mental health issues together, providing a firm foundation for long-term recovery. The first step is often the hardest, but we're here with a free assessment, insurance information, and treatment options. Our confidential helpline is available 24-7, so call 877-714-1318 and discover the Foundation's Recovery Network difference today. This is Rich Roll, and you're listening to Silver Guy Radio. Yo, what is up? What's happening? Shane Raymer here, coming from Northern California. Oh yeah, let's do the strip club announcer today. Please welcome to the stage, Veronica. What the funk am I doing? I have no idea. What's up with you? Thanks for tuning into the show today. As usual, every Friday, even though I'm a little behind the curve today. Thanks to humans for bringing us in. I'm super pumped right now. Oh yeah, almost have a boner. Slightly. It's a it's a half. It's a honer. I was terrible. Absolutely terrible. Trying to cut back on the F word. So I see how I got that right there. How are you? Hope you're good. I'm great. I'm actually insane. Losing my mind this week has been a week of learning and a week of thinking and meditating and praying, asking God for guidance. Oh yeah. And working out. I've been getting some damn good workouts in with the with the lady too. My lady friend. Some of the old cats. I've all the old OGs. I had a lady friend. So I'm gonna refer to the Jess as my lady friend today. My lady friend, the Jess, who I love very much, got my ass into some into some Tabata, I believe it's called. So some intervals, some short intervals of uh, conditioning exercises. I would uh, that's kind of how I would classify them. I may be getting that wrong. But yeah, man, that's good. Some little runs. Been eating a lot better. Got some energy. It's early on, so I'm trying not to get too far ahead of the curve. But uh, going well. Going well. Be sure to check us out at thatsoberguy.com for past episodes. Other resources. Also connect with us on Instagram, at RealThatSoberGuy, and at Shane Raymer on Twitter. Shane Raymer. This one goes out to Seth and Chad. Shane ro 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 ranger One of our old homeboys from high school used to scream that in the hallways. Mac Wan. What's up, Mac Wan? So, as you're hearing this, we are one week away. Well, if you're listening to it on today, August 31st. We are one week away from the live show, September 7th, at the Phoenix Theater in Petaluma, California. So get your ass there, sons and daughters. And brothers and sisters, we got special guest TJ Woodward going to be there. Uh, he's the author and creator of Conscious Recovery Program. And uh, he's also written another book. I don't have it on hand and I can't remember the name of it right now. Sorry, TJ. Uh, Conscious Being. I'm sorry. It just came to me. See? Look at that. Here's how I can get some tickets. They're 10 bucks. They help support the Sober Guy platform. Uh, you can go to thephoenixtheater.com or thatsoberguy.com. Click on the live events tab. Get yourself some tickets for you or a friend. Why am I doing this fucking weird voice today? What is going on? I'm like pumped up, but I'm weird and I'm crazy. It's Friday. Got a three day weekend. Hell yeah. But get some tickets to the show. Please do that. It's going to be fun. Come hang out with us. Northern California, Petaluma, California, Phoenix Theater. Check it out. What are we going to talk about today? Probably about recovery. Hey, let's talk about rec- let's talk about getting drunk. Let's talk about doing drugs. Yeah, let's talk about it. All right, we're talking. I'm drunk. I'm not drunk. Just kidding. <laughs> I probably sound like it though. Sometimes I feel like it. That's the good thing about being sober too. You get a natural energy high when you're riding the wave and shred the gnar, bro. Yeah. Let me tell you why I'm so pumped up. It's been a week of challenges, a week of challenges, a week of learning. We're going to dive right in today. So let's do that. I think I mentioned in last week's show, 
I was very excited. It was at the very end, I, I think, that I had an opportunity to share at the alumni meeting uh, at Azure Acres where I went to rehabilitation to find my inner self and stop drinking and doing drugs. So I was excited about that. Me, the kids, Jess, and Seth all rolled out there. And what happened? Showed up a little bit late. Man, it's a pain in the ass getting the kids out the door sometimes. Got to get gas. Got to get them prepared. We hit traffic on the way out to Petaluma or Santa Rosa, Sebastopol, that area. Going down 37 past uh, what used to be Sears Point. I believe it's Sonoma Raceway now, something like that. You always hit traffic there. It's a bit of a drive. No excuses. We didn't leave early enough. I showed up right as the meeting was starting. So I walked up and instead of checking in because I didn't want to bother anybody, I figured I talked to somebody yesterday. I'm going to be there. They know I'm going to be here. When it came around my turn to share, they would call on me. So as I sat there and thought about what I was going to say, how the share was going to go, um, what is what can I share that somebody out there is going to hear and relate to? Take a look around. There's quite a bit of people there. So as the first speaker went, gentleman did a nice job. Didn't hear much because what was I doing? I was too busy thinking about myself like a selfish fuck. Second girl came up, did a great job too. Had some really good points, heard a little bit of it. Once again, focused on me, selfish bastard. <laughs> and what happens? I'm thinking, yeah, all right, here we go. They're going to call me up. Well, that's our meeting today. Uh, we, we thank you. And I went, holy shit. Well, that sucks. And what did it do? It was a, it was a slap to my ego. It was a slap to my pride. It was a slap, um, to me, but not from anybody. It wasn't anybody's fault. It wasn't Azure's fault. It wasn't the secretary of the meetings fault. It wasn't anybody's fault. It was my fault. hundred percent my fault. Number one, I showed up a little late. Number two, I didn't check in. Number three, I just was all up in my own head. You know, it's funny. I don't even want, I almost, I don't want to share this right now. Let me, let me tell you, let me tell you that because it's very, there's some vulnerability going on right now where I feel a bit weak, a bit embarrassed and a bit stupid. You stupid motherfucker. I didn't even say it there. I swear I'm not drunk or on drugs right now either. I promise. I know it's a weird day. I am excited. I'll give you that. I haven't even drank that much coffee. But to get real for a minute, just for a minute, because I just want to be a jerk off today. That situation taught me so much this week. And, and, not, and there was a reason. And Jess told me that right after. Well, she kind of looked at me and she goes, I guess you're just supposed to be here to listen, not to share today. And I said, yeah, I guess you're right. But I wasn't, I wasn't excited about that because I felt embarrassed a little bit. And not that anybody knew. No, nobody knew. This was all going on. In, well, I guess Seth and my wife and, and Lucy asked me to. I thought you were going to share, Daddy. And that kind of got to me a little bit. But nobody else really could give two shits. Nobody knew, but it was all going on in my own head. It's a good example of how we make stories up in our head about stuff and make assumptions about things and judge ourselves and be extremely hard on ourselves when really it's us making these things up and creating these situations a lot of the time. And, and this is what was going on with me. And so we had some fun the rest of the barbecue. We hung out. I was super grateful to be invited there and, and much love to Azure, um, to the whole staff there, everybody for having us. The kids had a blast. They smashed on a pinata at the end, got a bunch of candy. Um, we ate some good, some good food. And uh, we got to talk to some of the uh, some of the people that were actually in treatment there, which was awesome. We ended up having a really good time. So thank you again to to them for for having us out. Um, and after that was done, though, what happened was, you know, we got back in the car and um, and you know we headed back home, and all of a sudden 
for some reason that that triggered me. So you take that instance, which was in itself, you know, something that I had to to work through and that I've had to kind of work through for the first couple of days into the week earlier. Um, but it triggered the domino effect of, of all the negative thoughts. Why do I even do sober guy? You know, why? Well, fuck it. Like, who cares? Like, why? What does it even matter? You know, why am I why am I spending so much time on this? It's just it's stupid. I'm stupid. Who do I think I am? I'm not I, I don't speak. I'm not worthy enough to share. I, you know, and, and, and those are the types of thoughts that start creeping in slowly, um, you know, infiltrating my mind and, and that leads to doubt. It leads to confusion. It leads to anger. It leads to resentment. It leads to all the things that we talk about, um, you know, in, in, in especially in recovery and life too, in general about trying to live a more positive lifestyle. These are the things that hold us back and they hold us back by keeping us in a place of isolation. And, um, and in some cases for me, at least this, this week was embarrassment, you know, anger, all those things that it talks about on page 86 of the big book start popping up pride, ego. And, and you know, the, the, the first couple days, Um, I was, I was being a a little bitch, I gotta say. And even Jess turned to me at some point, I think Monday night or Tuesday night on our way to step study. And I was bitching about something and she looked at me and she goes, you know, quit being a pussy. (laughs) You're being such a little bitch right now. Stop. And so I just want to set the tone too. Jess and I have been friends for a long time. We've known each other since the, since the sixth grade, obviously we're married now, but we have we have a unique relationship where we can kind of talk some shit to each other and be okay with it for the most part. Um, I'm not going to say it hasn't crossed the line. Sometimes a lot of that's in the past, you know, thank God. Uh, but in this case, she wasn't beating me up. She wasn't saying, Oh, you're such a little bitch. You're such a pussy. Quit. She wasn't saying it like that, but she was being real with me. And I need that sometimes, you know, quit being a bitch. Like quit your complaining, quit your crying, nut up and handle business. And I haven't, I haven't gone through this, something like this. It's been a while. And, you know, buddy pointed out and thank you to him for being honest and doing so is that we have to go through things like this in order for us to grow. We can't sit back and have everything be, you know, a okay all the time. Everything's going our way and, and we're not going to grow. We're not going to get uncomfortable. So I got really, really uncomfortable this last week. It was a really, really great learning experience for me. And and let me go into that a little bit. So I already mentioned that I was all up in my own head, right? I mentioned a little bit that it was every, I was, I made everything about this visit, you know, leading up to it about my, what I was going to talk about. I want everyone to hear how smart I am and how much I, you know, and, and I don't, I don't think about that like consciously. I'm not going there thinking like, I want everyone to know how fucking smart I am. And I'm going to share all of my knowledge that I, I don't go into it like that. But I think subconsciously there is something there, a sense of, I do want to share what I've learned. And I think that comes from a good place for the most part. But at the same time, if I'm really, really honest with myself, it also can come from a place of, um, of ego and of pride. And that is what I do not want to live my life by, you know, and I don't do that often. That's why I say, at least I don't think I do it often, but, um, you know, this time I absolutely did. And I I don't even think I realized it, you know, until this, this situation happened. And so, you know, leading up to it, I wasn't focused on the opportunity to go back and to, to mingle with people and hang out and, you know, bring my kids back there and enjoy this experience of going back. I was so focused on, on what I was going to do and talk about when I shared, you know, and then when I didn't, Oh God, all oh, the world's coming to an end. Cause Shane didn't get his, didn't get his way. You know, it didn't go the way that, that Shane expected it to. And I let it ruin the day and the following day, you know, and I think we met with Seth and Mel that next night to talk about the live show coming up next Friday. You know, we had a meeting and stuff and, and I, I did, you know, and thank you to, to both of them and Jess, you know, for having that meeting and, and kind of letting me share a little bit about how I was feeling. That's the importance of community and friendship right there too, guys. I just want to bring point that out is that, 
you know, that's what it's about is having people around you that can help you through some of this shit and allow you to talk about it and not judge you, not talk down to you. Just listen and understand and say, I get it. You know, your feelings are valid. You know, I think Seth said that or Mel or Jess, one of them, maybe all of them, you know, I feel you, you know, and, and, and from a loving place, not a judging place. And that was huge. That was a huge help, you know, and I, but I want to go back real quick and I know I'm kind of jumping around right now, but I, it, it's so important to understand, like, like I mentioned what buddy was saying about if we don't go through these things, sometimes there's no growth and we stay stagnant and I mentioned that to him. Well, you know, I've been comfortable for a while. I've been feeling like I'm going through the motions and I've been through this before. This life is a, is a constant change. Seasons changing the roller coaster ride, you know, the ups and the downs, peaks and valleys, however you want to refer to it, you know, good times and shitty times. It's constant. Sometimes you're high, sometimes you're low. And you know, riding that out and having the, the community and support around you and the resources and, and knowing what to do when you get into those is, you know, is and can and might just be what saves, you know, my life or your life or, um, or you know, a, a run that you might not come back from if you go back out again and drink or, or, or use or, you know, whatever the circumstances are that you get into that I could get into. If I didn't have that at that time, that would have been a great opportunity and it was fucking stupid, but it still, I could have used it as a great opportunity to say, fuck all this. I'm done. Like I'm this shit stupid. Cause that's where I was at over something so dumb over something so internal that nobody else gave a shit, a shit about really. And, and, and it, it got to me. And, and so, and, 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 and <laughs> you want me to stutter one more time? I can. It, it, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But it's, it's crazy. You know, the mind is crazy. And I, man, that's the first time I've referred to that in a minute. The mind. It is. It's the mind. It's a separate entity. My mind is fucking separate from my soul. It's separate from my inside, my conscience, my want, my need to do right to do the next right thing. My mind is disconnected from that most of the time because my mind, my mind's playing tricks on me. Name that, name that tune. Ghetto boy, son. I was bumping that earlier today. That's funny that came up. But you feel me? Does anybody understand what I'm saying? I wish you could tell me back right now. Maybe you can in an email or hit me up on Instagram at real that sober guy. Send me a message. Tell me you feel me on this. Like the mind is a powerful, powerful thing that can really get us off track if we're not paying attention and don't have community and people around us to bring us back up. You know what? I just thought of something too. Pastor Dave from our church, the father's house, um, you know, he talked about this in last, in last weekend's uh, sermon and he talked about he shared a story of how he got really, really sick a while back. And he's, you know, he's the lead pastor of this big church with a, with a lot of people involved, a lot of different ministries. Um, and there's a lot of moving components to this and he got sick and he's usually the guy that's building everyone up and taking care of business and doing that. And when he got sick, he had to let go and he had to have people pray over him and show him love and show him grace and be there. And not only that, but take the reins and, and, and handle business while he was, while he was, um, you know, recuperating. And, and so point being is that sometimes we all need help. We all need to ask for help no matter where we're at in our own journey, whether we think that we're doing great, which I thought I, and I still think I'm doing pretty damn good. But, I, but my point is, is I can get lackadaisical at times and think that I got everything cool and I'm kind of just riding, riding the wave, like I like to say, and then something happens and then I realize like, damn, maybe I'm not as dialed in as I thought I was, you know, and that's pretty evident in this, in this current situation. And I just, to be hundred percent open and honest, I just want to thank everybody for listening to the show and allowing me, you know, to share a little bit. And I hope that this shitty experience this week 
can help somebody else out there and say, man, yeah, I feel you. Like I know, I know what that's, you know, like going through, you know, maybe you're going through something similar right now, but I'm here to tell you that when you have the right people around you and, and, and you have faith and you have some resources and some tools to deal with it, it might take a, a couple days, you know, it might take a couple weeks, it might take a couple months, who knows what, depending on the, the, the severity of the situation. Obviously there's way more shitty things than this, but this was something that happened to me this week and that's why I'm sharing it. Um, so what did this teach me? What did, what have I learned in, in this process? And, um, I think I've, I've probably alluded to a few things already. One of them was to take a step back and, and look at, you know, look at myself and look at what I'm doing. And, and, and here's the thing with the podcast guys, like it's, it's a great platform and I appreciate the shit out of it. I'm so happy that Seth got to come back on or got to come on and, and started doing the show on Tuesdays. I hope you guys are digging the Tuesday show with Seth. Uh, he's doing a great job. It's really awesome to be working together and, and to be able to share this with, with him and with Mel and with Jess. And, you know, to that, there's, there's a lot of stuff that goes on from social media and, and, and booking podcasts and recording them. And then the work of like post-production and putting them out and, and then answering emails and all that stuff. And I'm, I'm absolutely not bitching about it. But what I'm saying is I can get caught up in all that. I get caught up in that sometimes. And, and, and not only that, then you add in, um, some of you guys know I'm going back to school. Um, I'm a dad, I'm a husband, I have a, a corporate show that I produce and host. And, you know, there's a lot of things in life. And what happens is, is even though I'm doing all the things that I'm supposed to do, I'm checking the boxes. I'm checking the boxes. I'm going down the list and I'm checking the boxes. Got it done. Got it done. Got it done. I'm not. I'm not in it fully. And, and what I'm talking about, I'm talking about just being real and honest in my recovery. And that's kind of what I'm doing in this podcast right now. And I, I hope that, um, I hope that's okay today to be able to do that a little bit. Cause usually I'm doing interviews and I'm, you know, I have some topic I'm discussing and I'm trying to be insightful and all that shit. Like, and sometimes I don't want to fucking do that. Like, I just want to be me. And, and I do do that most of the time. That's the feedback I get from all you guys out there too, is that like, Hey, I love the show because you're you and, and you do talk. And I, I want to be a hundred percent on that. Like I am, I'm never putting on an act or anything. Am I goofy sometimes? Hell yeah. I like to have some fun, say some stupid shit sometimes. And you know, I, I, I definitely do that. But at the end of the day, I think what happens is, and what has happened is I've gotten caught up in all the, all the stuff that comes with it. And I haven't done it on purpose, but I've forgot a little bit about what it is to be in recovery day in and day out and, and really remembering what it was like before all of this, you know, before when I was in rehab, right before I went to rehab. And it's funny, I was going through our storage, cleaning some shit out. That's a, an extra bill that I don't know why I've been paying for the last eight months. So I'm too lazy or busy or whatever we want to call it to go get all the shit out. I finally went and got it all out and I was going through one of the boxes that was in there and you know, it, it, it really, it just like it, it touched my heart big time. Let me, I don't even know how else to put it. Um, you know, to go through this box and find like my old NA book from rehab and my old, uh, against the stream book that Jess bought me right when I got out of rehab. And then I found this folder that she gave me when I was in rehab, it was pictures of her and Lou, like on their way to come visit me. And like this, you know, this binder and some, some, uh, a, you know, a couple letters and letters from all the support from my mom, from my family, you know, um, from, from just every, but all the love when I was going through all that stuff and all the people who were there to support me, you know, and I didn't go get the book out. It's still out. It's, it's still out to outside. I didn't grab it and I'm not going to go get it right now, but there was a quote inside of my NA book. And I remember writing it down because David from, from Azure said it. And, um, it basically just said though, like whatever's up there, you know, please like no more, like no more. I can't take this anymore. And let me be reminded of all that I've been through. And I found that today. I found that today. Let me be reminded of all that I've been through. 
And man, that was some powerful shit right there in the moment, just in, in going, you know, from um, this shitty attitude I've been having, you know, earlier in the week and, and all this doubt and fear and all that stuff starts creeping up. And, um, you know, I just want to say, don't forget, you know, don't forget what it was like before. And that's why we stay locked in and we go to meetings and, you know, people ask, well, why, why do you still go to those meetings? Like you have almost five years, you know, sober, like, what do you need those for? Well, recovery is not just something that you finish a program and then boom, you're, you're done and everything's great. And you don't have to do that anymore. It's not like that. Well, I can't speak for anyone else from people I've heard. It's not like that. And I know for me, it's not like that. Like I got to stay dialed in because I will forget. And I remember David specifically talking about that in rehab saying, you will forget. You will forget if you don't stay dialed in. And what happens then? Ego starts creeping in. Pride starts creeping in. I got this. I got this. Attitude starts creeping in. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fucked. Attitude starts creeping in, starts popping up. I apologize for the language today, but I can't, I can't help it sometimes. You know, it's when I get on this, you know, and I, I know I'm, I'm venting a little bit today. And once again, I appreciate the opportunity to do that. Um, you know, this, this has been quite the, the learning. Why the fuck does my throat do that? So annoying. I've been noticing that lately. It's like this, I don't have phlegm in my throat. I don't know if it's the more I talk, the scratchier my voice gets. It's like, <laughs> what is that? I don't know. Now I totally forgot what I was going to say. It was, must have been something very insightful and very smart because I am so intelligent. No, that's, you see, I mean, that's, that's the kind of stuff I got to be careful of. Have to be careful. So basically, let me let me kind of wrap this up today, and um, and and end with this. Basically, I got a, a a very humbling slap in the face this last week to to sit up and understand, you know that that this everything that I've been blessed with from God from uh, from my family, you know everything recovery, life in general, just waking up breathing. It's all a gift, number one. It ain't mine. And number two, I have to stay humble in all of it and, and just remember what it was like before, what my life was like five years ago. It was, it was eviction. It was um, financially broken, emotionally broken. It was um, stress. It was worry. It was resentment. It was fear. It was anger. It was hatred. Um, I mean, go down the list. That's what my life was five years ago. And today I don't do that. And if I'm not careful, even today, those things, although a little less, um, you know, less intense still creep up. And the littlest thing can be a trigger, like not getting my way, being able to speak at an event, you know, that I was so grateful and, and blessed to be there in the first place. I still have doubts and fear and all this, all this stuff. And it pops up. And, um, if I'm not careful, one little trigger can lead to, you know, the dominoes completely falling. And I feel like there was something else I was going to add into this. And now I forgot now. Um, it was ego. I know, you know, it was pride. It was talking about that. And I, I, I guess too, I guess the other thing I would say is that, you know, back to the platform to sober guy, I'm, I'm super honored and blessed to be able to do it. And I'm, like I said, I'm glad Seth is a part of it now, but I have to get back to the basics too. You know, I have to get back to, to putting a lot of the post-production stuff and the social media and all that. I'm not saying I'm not going to do it cause it's part of it, but I can't get so lost in that stuff that I forget like what recovery is about. And it's really about me showing up me staying dialed in, me being humble, you know, staying away from ego, from pride, uh, from all that stuff. And, you know, I like to think like, yeah, I do a pretty good job of that. But apparently, you know, I, I don't sometimes. And it's a great reality check. And so as Jocko Willink said, and thank you, David Rack, uh, Rackford, Ratchford, sorry, Dave, uh, for, um, for reminding me and sending me this video, um, 
you know, good. Something bad happens to you, good. How can you learn from it? You know, you lost your job, good. What, what, how is this an opportunity, basically? And so what, what bad is going on in your life right now? What, what's something shitty that happened this week or is happening right now or that you're going through that you can say good to? And I don't mean that with any disrespect if it's something that is absolutely you know, severe. I get it. But at the same time, how can we put a positive spin and, and perspective on something and how can we learn from that? And thank God, you know, he smacked my ass around this week and said, bro, let the ego down, let the pride down, get out of self, you know, look at why you're here. Look how far I brought you. Look at where you came from, son. Like, damn, that is some shit right there. To be pulled out of addiction and hatred, self-hatred. You know, we can't forget that. We can't forget that. It's huge. I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed my little rant today. And thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for uh, for all your support. You know, I had, a, I had a few emails this week too that really helped me. Um, and, and just, re- that, that's the other thing it just reminded me of why, you know, we still do this, why we put out an episode each week and, and talk with people and talk with ourselves. I'm talking with myself right now, you know, and it has nothing to do with any of the other shit other than, other than serving and, and being in community with other people and talking about this stuff. That's it. Trying to get a little bit better, trying to understand ourselves a little bit better. And thanks to Matt too, from XVX apparel all the way out in the UK had a good conversation with him this week. That served as a great reminder. Um, you know, he's you know he's doing great. He got back on the horse too. So much love to you, bro. Um, if you're listening, and uh, you know everybody out there, just keep keep it up, keep going. We're all in this together. Get to a meeting this weekend if you if you haven't been to one. Get to one. Call your sponsor. If you don't have a sponsor, get one. All that good stuff. It's so important. That's the basics right there. Listen to some podcasts this week. Thank you again for tuning in today and hearing me ramble a little bit and, uh, you know, hit us up, uh, on Instagram at real that sober guy or at Shane Raymer on Twitter. Check us out the live show next, uh, next Friday, September 7th. If you're around in the Northern California area, go to that sober guy.com, click on the live events there and get some tickets. You can also go straight to the Phoenix theater.com. We'd love to see you out there and we'll talk some recovery and have some fun. Uh, peace, love and respect as always. Much love to you guys. Have a great weekend.